So one of the most powerful things you can do to upgrade the functionality of your Canon M50 or Canon M50 Mark II camera is to buy a cage and build a cinema rig around it. And when I first kind of saw cameras built out like this, I really wasn't sure what the point was. To me, it just kind of seemed like people trying to add stuff to their cameras to, I don't know, make them look cooler or bigger. I, I wasn't really quite sure. But what I have found over the years is if you see any Hollywood production, where they've got a handheld camera, the cameras generally just come as a box with a hole in it in the sensor. Then you have to build everything else around that. And when they build the stuff around that for handheld video shooting, you end up with all kinds of knobs and, and buttons and handles and control points, sometimes lights, um, even audio, microphones, and if you take your M50 and kind of emulate that sort of setup, you actually get some of that Hollywood functionality and are able to achieve some of the same handheld Hollywood shots with your Canon M50. And the first thing and the sort of the core component of the cinema build out is the cage. And the cage, uh, and you can get cages for just about every camera on the planet. And the cage basically just creates a, a metal framework around the camera itself and allows you to attach things to the camera. Where if you just look at the camera on its own, the only place it's got to attach anything is the little tripod mount at the bottom. We're gonna take advantage of that and we are going to mount a cage that surrounds this whole thing. And there's gonna be all kinds of different attachment points around the bottom, top, and sides of the camera. And the cage that I use can actually be purchased in a couple of different ways. And one is just the cage itself without the top handle, or you can buy a kit which actually has the, the cage and the top handle. And it's a little bit cheaper to buy it with the top handle. And I think that's actually a better setup because when you're, when you're going to put the cage on the camera, you're almost always going to have a top handle. So I'll put the Canon M50 in the cage now, and this is stage one of our build. So now that we got the cage on, what has that done for us? Well, it's obviously given us the attachment points all around the outside of the camera. It has also given us the top handle, and this gives us an extra level of stability when we are filming. It allows us to get down and get some low angle shots. It allows us to get some tracking shots more easily, where we'd probably just be moving the camera like this. It also creates a much more stable platform. When I'm using the top handle, look at how steady that camera is. It's just like a pendulum hanging straight down from my hand and allows you to get extremely stable footage just by using the top handle. Now, the next thing we're gonna add is a little side handle. That's gonna give us a handle on the side, which gives us some stability sideways. So if we're doing panning shots or if we're following people or we're sort of trying to get a dolly in and out shot, it just gives us a lot more stability. And that is just gonna attach right here on the left, for my left hand to use. And what you'll see is now we've got our handle here and we've got our handle here. So here is our stable platform for video. And you can see that's gonna be so much more stable than, than that. So now we've got this, this is one position. And the farther you get your hands apart, the, the more it takes out of this sort of horizontal or horizon twist. So rather than like this, we're like this. We've also got the top handle for our set of walking and tracking shots and low down shots. And now we've, we've, that's all the grips that we're going to add at this stage. And now we're gonna add, I think maybe next we'll add the lens. And although you can equip this thing just like this and use the kit lens and get really great results, adding this next lens does a couple of things. One, it adds weight to the camera, which actually makes your small hand movements more smooth, and it takes a lot of the micro jitters out of the footage that you would get otherwise. The second thing this does is it's going to allow us to blur out that background to get a really sort of cinematic shot where you've got a person's face in focus and then the background is all blown out and blurred. 
It's also going to get us very good low light performance. So we know sort of sunset, sunrise, dim lights or in a city at night where you've just got the lights in the background. This is going to allow us to achieve some really cinematic shots in those situations that we're just not going to get with the kit lens. And this lens is actually reasonably priced for what it is. I think it normally retails around $800. But I've seen it on sale between six and eight hundred dollars off the top of my head, maybe six ninety nine or something like that. And it should be noted that this lens, actually, at one point the Apple Store was selling a cinema kit, which came up with everything you needed to make like a documentary or something that you could put on Netflix. And this kit cost about fifteen thousand dollars off the top of my head. But they had to, obviously they wanted to include everything you needed. And that included cages and handles and a lot of the stuff, audio, everything we're talking about today. But they also needed to include a lens. And the lens they included in this kit that was about a $15,000 kit was this lens. This lens which you can buy for six or eight hundred dollars and this lens has been used to shoot hollywood productions award-winning blockbusters independent award-winning films this is a phenomenal lens and for this style APS-C size sensor, this is generally considered the best zoom lens ever made. Now I will note that this is an EFS mount lens and because of that we have to use the adapter as well. So we've got the adapter and the lens there. And you can get the adapters pretty cheap. They're about $30 or something like that. And I'll link all of this stuff in the description down below. Now the next thing we're going to add, and getting good audio is, is absolutely critical. Even if your video is great, if your audio is poor, then your production is likely going to be a bust. And what I've got here is this amazing all-in-one microphone and recording unit. And this will allow us to capture a completely separate audio from the camera. And you'll see as we move this rig forward, we'll actually end up with some redundancy. So if one of the or the others fails to capture good, clean audio, we've got the other one to fall back on. Now, I like to just put this one over here, just on the handle. That keeps it far enough out of range of the lens, so it's not shadowing the lens and you're not going to be seeing that in the shot. And when we go to shoot with this rig, we will separately need to hit the record button on the audio recorder and shotgun microphone from the camera. And just in case we don't do that, or if the batteries die in this, or something happens with this setup, I always have a backup microphone on here. And with that one, I just use this little $30 microphone, which um, I'll put a link to this in the description down below too. This is like a phenomenal microphone. I find the quality to be as good as the $60, $70 Rode version of this microphone. It's $30, comes with a carrying pouch, wind muff, and it comes with the cord that you can use in your camera or your phone. So it's super versatile. Generally, I will put it up here. Uh, and then you run the cable just down here and your microphone plug is here. And so generally that would be how I would be using it. But there are some situations where I actually need a little bit of a fill light on my subject. And if that is the case, I will take the microphone off and I will just tuck it down here where it's a little bit tighter, but you can still get it in there. And I will take this little light and I will pop it here. And you normally don't want a bright light on your subject because it'll look like some sort of weird Blair Witch Project slash flashlight in the dark type effect. But what you can do is you've got a light here and then just turn it down nice and low depending on how far your subject is away. And that will just give what we call a fill light. So if there's some harsh shadows falling on their face and you want to take those out, just this little fill light adjusted to the right amount will just soften that lighting up and it'll actually make their features and it's much more flattering on the face. So that's a situation where I would use this. And if you wanted to be really crazy with the rig, 
you can actually mount the microphone on top of the light. Now we're just getting ridiculous. It won't even fit in the scene. Um, you can actually mount on top of the light the actual second microphone. Now, the one of the cool things about this audio recorder, just to add to the versatility of this whole setup, is this audio recorder can actually come off, and since it is independent, it can be set on a tripod or a little handheld tripod or a Joby Gorilla Pod, and it can be actually set up separately. So you've got this microphone set up uh, at an angle, maybe on a little Gorilla Pod or something like that, closer to your audio source. And then you are back with this camera, likely with your microphone, the little microphone. And now you have got two sources of audio, the one in the camera and the separate one. And this one is almost always going to get you the better audio quality being closer to the sound source. And how often do I use the camera set up like this? Ah, generally when I want the best possible quality footage out of the camera, this is what I'm using. Obviously, if I want to be sneaky, lightweight, uh, nimble, then this probably isn't the setup. But I have walked around with the family and shot family videos with this just as an exercise to get comfortable with it. And then I would use it more likely in a professional environment. And it does give you a bonus if you are shooting with the N50. If you show up to the M50 with the kit lens for video, that sends one message. If you show up with the M50 with all this stuff hanging off of it, as silly as it might seem, it really did, does sort of increase the value that the client or person that you're doing the video work for is going to see in what you're doing. They feel like they're getting what they paid for by seeing all this stuff hanging off the camera. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below. And if you're interested in the Canon M50, M6 Mark II, uh, M50 Mark II, any of those cameras, just be sure to check out some of my other videos. I'll put a playlist up here in the corner somewhere. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.